Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit your photos in Lightroom step by step. So let's go. So the first thing that we are going to need is obviously the software itself. So if you don't have it, just go ahead and download it from Adobe's website. You can download it for free, obviously, but it's not for free to use. You will get a seven day free trial. But if you are thinking about starting a career in photography, I'll say this is a very good investment. So go ahead and buy the full version of it. And moving on, let's jump in and start editing our photos. Okay, so once you have the software with you, just open it and go to the file option here and select import photos and videos and import the photos that you want to edit. For this tutorial, I'm selecting these two files and we will start with this one. So select the file that you want to edit and go from library to develop. Now in the develop menu, you can see on the right side, we have all the tools that we are going to use to edit our photo. So starting from the top, you have your crop overlay, your spot removal, your red eye correction, your graduated filter, your radial filter, and your adjustment brush. So the first thing that we are going to do is to crop our image. I'm going to crop it into five into four. And after that, you can straighten your photo either by sliding left or right or just selecting the auto option here. I don't trust this auto option because it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So I'm just going to adjust the image myself. After cropping our image, let's go ahead and start using the basic tools. Now here you have the profile option. If you are shooting raw, you will get all the options here. If not, you will get only the color and the black and white one. So I'm going to select the Adobe landscape, which gives the image overall a very nice tone. So next you can adjust your white balance either by using this eyedropper or using these options, which you will get if you are shooting raw. If not, you can just simply slide this left and right and adjust the white balance yourself. For this image, I think the camera captured it really well, so I won't be adjusting that. And moving on, you have your tones. These are very basic options. I usually just start by clicking auto and the software adjusts the overall tone of the image according to its algorithm. And this usually works fine. And I'm just going to adjust a little bit of the highlights here and the shadows maybe. And maybe a little bit of exposure. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, moving on, you have these three options, texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now, these are very nice options. The texture one sharpens your images very well. So, I'll just keep it on 50. And the clarity enhances the overall details in your images. And the dehaze one, well, as its name, it dehazes the image. As you can see, as I'm increasing it, the skies are becoming more clear and more blue. So, this can look a bit artificial as well. So better to keep it on the lowest amount possible. Now sometimes the issue rises that while we are increasing the dehaze, you can see here the image has become dark. So what you can do is avoid using it here and select a graduated filter. Go over the top of the image and just drag it down. And now you can see only your sky is affected and then monument below is not that much. Okay, so moving on, you have your vibrance and saturation tool. I like to keep my pictures vibrant, so I'll just increase this. And the saturation is fine, so I'll leave it. Okay, so moving on, you have this HSL panel, which is a very interesting tool to have. Here you can adjust the hue, saturation, and luminous of every particular color. Now, for example, we want to change the color of the sky. So we will go ahead into blues and adjust it by dragging this slider left or right. Uh, this is nice. If you want to change the color of the grass, just go to the green and adjust the slider according to your preferences. The saturation of the overall image is fine, so we won't be touching that. And going into the lumens, we can increase the luminance of the green to make a grass even more brighter. And if you want to adjust some other colors, obviously you can do that as well. For example, if I want to adjust the color of this monument, I'll just use the red and oranges here. And this is good. Okay, so moving on, you have this detail panel in which you have the sharpening and the noise reduction option. So how I use sharpening is by dragging it up to 70 or 80 and then selecting the masking tool. With holding the Alt key, you can see 
that it tells you where is the sharpening effect applies so i think yep this is fine it's only coming on to the edges of the monument and the grass a little bit so that will work for us and after that you have your noise reduction now this helps when you're shooting in uh, low light conditions and you have a lot of grains in your image but i like to keep it on 25 all the time just in case i have any grains and i cannot see here so you know the safe way to go after that you have your lens corrections and i'll recommend just keep these boxes checked and that will be fine now moving on if you are still not happy with your image like i'm not because I don't want these trees to go dark so I'll just remove the gradient filter that we applied earlier and we can go using an adjustment brush going here and selecting which effect we want to use and then just paint over the area that we want to be dehazed And when you're all done, just click done. And to see the before and after, just go over here and cycle between before and after. And you can see we went from here to here. Looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, so another example. We will start editing this photo. So first of all, go into crop. Select the ratio. Adjust it a bit. Then in tones. Select the auto one and the temperature I'll go with daylight. If you are not shooting raw, you you still have the temperature and tint slider here, so you can adjust that. We will select the Adobe landscape. It gives the image an overall very nice touch. So moving on. I'm not going to increase the texture or clarity or anything because I don't want to apply anything on my background. So we will leave this all. I don't want to adjust the HSL in this one because the colors are looking nice. We will just sharpen our image, hold the Alt key and mask it, and the basic construction and apply these two. And after that, I want to give it a bit of a uh, veneering effect, you know. So, how to do it artificially? Just select the radial filter, go on to the burn option. And even after selecting these, you can adjust it according to your preferences. So I'm going to reduce the shadows and decrease the blacks here. And then we are going to draw a circle over here. And after that, I want this area to be a bit more exposed. So we will go to the adjustment brush and select dodge which will basically lighten our image you can see it's it only increases the exposure a bit so we will just draw the area that we want to apply it on that's good and now we want to enhance the eye a bit so we will again go to the adjustment brush Select the option Iris Enhance and paint over this area. And as I said earlier, you can obviously adjust it according to your preferences. So I'm going to increase the texture, clarity, the shadows a bit, and a bit of contrast. And I think this is fine. So, the moment of truth, let's compare our image. Okay, so this was it for this tutorial. Obviously, you guys will have to practice a lot before you master this software. But as a wise man once said, practice makes a man perfect. So keep on practicing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.